Song. 
Andrea, thanks Edward, thanks Gary. Yes, that was the Jesus and the Mary Chain live at the Roxy with Just Like Honey, You Trip Me Up, Jesus Blank, Industrial Bridge, Empty Room, Inside Me, and Mushroom. Jesus Blank? Jesus, we're not allowed to say that <laughs> word. It's an FCC rule, yes. Oh! Is it part of, of, of the credibility of a band to, to deal with the absence of hope, like I thought I heard in some of your songs? No, it's all about being very constructive, is this? Yes. It's realistic. What kind of constructiveness? Well, it's a grim world. Even in Belgium, it's a grim world. Yeah. So we feel it necessary to point that out and use that as a basis for everything else. Again, oh. not unreasonable. <laughs> just about how you can deal with the world as it is through the medium of women, drugs and roads mostly. Yeah, but can, can you be a bit more clear about that? What's the real constructive concept of first and last and always? No, there's no one particular concept. It, it breaks itself down to, I don't know, five or six primary ideas. Like, the... like how, how you deal with people properly how you have a good time without doing too much damage to yourself and preferably very little to those around you that you care about how you do the most damage to people you don't like stuff like that well, I see when do you think that a concert is really satisfying? when I collapse at the end of it mm -hmm. yeah charting at this moment, yeah, for instance, with the walk away and no time to cry. Do you think that it's hard for the credibility of a band like you to chart? No, we were brought up on chart acts. When we grew up, the only people that you got to know about were in the charts, so we don't find mm. it strange to find ourselves there. Yeah, so you don't mind about, for instance, Killing Joke going for number one these days? Well, we don't like fascists, otherwise we think they're very... about a year 
ago. But it is basically a distribution deal that we signed so that we can get our records released in territories that previously could only buy one import. It's, it's a means to an end. We, st we still have full control over what we record and how we record it. We still have control over the artwork and how the money is spent and stuff. We're still an independent band, but we're working in a bigger league. We have more resources now. And we want... I mean, just the very fact that you form a band implies that you want to be successful. You want your music to reach as big an audience as possible. Well, okay. Um, as for getting swallowed up by the industry, I don't think that will happen. We have to we have to compete with the rest of the industry. We have to compete with Duran Duran in one. And I think it's it's very healthy that bands like us can compete with bands like that. It's uh, it's educational for people. I mean, if they're constantly getting confronted by people like Culture Club, etc., etc., then there's there's no um, questioning of the um, their musical heritage. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They want to be huge, but in saying that is that, that we won't do things that we don't want to do to achieve that. We'll still make the records that we want to make. We'll still play the concerts we want to play. We'll play them the way we want to play them. But we'd like to think that we can be successful doing that. There's, uh, Liverpool bands are very different from Manchester bands. Manchester bands are different from Leeds bands. And we're all different from London bands. I hate London bands. Don't like London. What's special about uh, Leeds bands? Um, basically they're good. It is progress because it means that they're special because they're from Leeds. They reflect the city of Leeds. They reflect their environment. The same as Manchester bands. You get the Smiths and the Fall, etc. They reflect Manchester. Especially in that respect. Uh, a lot of Leeds bands use drum machines. Don't know why, but they just do. Maybe there's not a lot of drummers in Leeds. Don't know. I mean, they're only special because they reflect the area they come from. I mean, what would you tell me about Leeds? I haven't been there, so... Leeds is um, a northern English and old indu industrial town. Is it? It's industries that have that are old industries that have died and are no longer there, but the people are still there. There's a lot of unemployment in Leeds, but it's a way of life. It's not. It's not something a lot of people question in Leeds. They accept it because they're brought up like that. Brought up to believe that, well, all the old industries are closed, we're not going to have a job, so let's make the most of it. I think, I think it's uh, similar in a lot of areas worldwide, not just England. I think it's the same in certain areas in Germany. However, Wayne said, to be positive, to be optimistic. Yeah. But to be realistic too, not to be unnecessarily optimistic, to be optimistic but realise that maybe you can't always have what you want. I don't know, that's, that's the message today. <laughs> It'll be different tomorrow. That's where the name of the band comes from, Sisters and this. Cohen. Actually, Dr. Avalanche does not come from Leonard Cohen. It, it was the name of um, a Swiss football referee. Seriously. Yeah. Dr. Avalanche, it was a great name. We listen to Leonard Cohen, we like Leonard Cohen, but we like lots of other things. It's very difficult for us to actually pinpoint, to say, yes, we are influenced by Leonard Cohen. 
I think Leonard Cohen, a lot of his songs had a, um, you feel a lot of affinity with his songs. You listen to them and you can, you can feel an affinity and empathy with them. I think that's the similar thing. That's, that's what people get from Leonard Cohen records, so that they can feel that they know what he's singing about. But I wouldn't say it was just Leonard Cohen, I would say it's like things like Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix. The list, the list is endless. All the We're sat here in Gothenburg in a darkened room, fluorescent blue light, a pinball machine that says Haunted House. Nah, it's a load of rubbish. I mean, we're just people. It's just, this is the way we feel comfortable. It's not a conscious image or anything. But we're into, we're into per perpetuating myths, though. We're, we're into perpetuating myth. We're into being legendary. <laughs> How do you do that? Don't know, we're working on it. When say that I'm a mystic. Hey, Wayne. What's that you've been playing? Pinball. Pinball? Haunted house pinball. You like playing pinball? <laughs> yeah. Don't you? It's a good way to relax. It's a misconception on most people's part that our music is black and pessimistic. It's not. It's it's realistic. And it's almost optimistic. But, but it's not foolishly optimistic. It's like it's like saying, you know, true love lasts forever. It doesn't. You know. Wake me up before you go go. <laughs> what does that mean? Don't know. It just reflects the way we are, the way we live our lives, reflects what's around us. So in that respect, it's realistic. It's not pessimistic at all. I think there's a lot of songs on the LP that are love songs, but they're not love songs in the uh, traditional way. They don't say, I love you, baby. You know, Will you kiss me? I mean, they don't say things, because you don't say things like that in conversation. It's like if me and you were having an affair, I wouldn't say to you, I love you, baby, kiss me now. Would I? Huh? For if...